introduction to a collection of ballads this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a collection of ballads edited by andrew lang introduction when the learned first gave serious attention to popular ballads from the time of percy to that of scott they labored under certain disabilities the comparative method was scarcely understood and was little practiced editors were content to study the ballads of their own countryside or at most of great britain teutonic and northern parallels to our ballads were then adducted as by scott and jameson it was later that the ballads of europe from the pharaohs to modern greece were compared with our own with european marchen or children's tales and with the popular songs dances and traditions of classical and savage peoples the results of this more recent comparison may be briefly stated poetry begins as aristotle says in improvisation every man is his own poet and in moments of strong motion expresses himself in song a typical example is the song of la Marche in genesis i have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt instances perpetually occur in the sagas grettir eagle scarpenden are always singing in kidnapped mr stevenson introduces the song of the sword of allen a fine example of celtic practice words and air are beaten out together in the heart of victory in the same way the women sang improvised dirges like helen lullabies like the lullaby of dan in similides and flower songs as in modern italy every function of life war agriculture the chase had its appropriate magical and mimetic dance and song as in finland among red indians and among australian blacks the deeds of men were chanted by heroes as by achilles stories were told in alternate verse and prose girls like homer's narcissia accompanied dance and ball play priests and medicine men accompanied rites and magical ceremonies by songs these practices are world-wide and world-old the thoroughly popular songs thus evolved became the rude material of a professional class of minstrels when these arose as in the heroic age of greece a minstrel might be attached to a court or a noble or he might go wandering with song and harp among the people in either case this class of men developed more regular and ample measures they evolved in the hexameter the laze of the chansons de guest the strange technicalities of scandinavian poetry the meters of vedic hymns the choral odes of greece the narrative popular chant became in their hands the epic or medieval rhymed romance the meter of improvised verse changed into the artistic lyric these lyric forms were fixed in many cases by the art of writing but poetry did not remain solely in professional and literary hands the medieval minstrels and jongleurs who may best be studied in leon gautier's introduction to his Popes francais sang in court and camp the poorer less regular brethren of the art 
harped and played conjuring tricks in farm and grange or at street corners the foreign newer meters took the place of the old alliterative english verse but unprofessional men and women did not cease to make and sing some writers have decided among them mr courthope that our traditional ballads are degraded popular survivals of literary poetry the plots and situations of some ballads are indeed the same as those of some literary medieval romances but these plots and situations in epic and romance are themselves the final literary form of marchand myths and inventions originally popular and still in certain cases extant into popular form among races which have not yet evolved or borrowed the ampler and more polished and complex genres of literature thus when a literary romance and a ballad have the same theme the ballad may be a popular degradation of the romance or it may be the original popular shape of it still surviving in tradition a well-known case in prose is that of the french fairy tales perrot in 1697 borrowed these from tradition and gave them literary and courtly shape but cendrillon or chaperon rouge in the month in the mouth of a french peasant is apt to be the old traditional version uncontaminated by the refinements of perrault despite perrault's immense success and circulation thus tradition preserves pre-literary forms even though on occasion it may borrow from literature peasant poets have been authors of ballads without being for all that professional minstrels many such poems survive in our ballad literature the material of the ballad may be either romantic or hysterical the former class is based on one of the prim primeval invented situations one of the elements of the machern in prose such tales or myths occur in the stories of savages in the legends of peasants are interwoven later with the plot in epic or romance and may also inspire ballads popular superstitions the witch metamorphosis the returning ghost the fairy all of them survivals of the earliest thought naturally play a great part the historical ballad on the other hand has a basis of resounding fact murder battle or fire raising but the facts being derived from popular rumor are immediately corrupted and distorted sometimes out of all knowledge good examples are the ballads on darnley's murder and the youth of james the sixth in the romantic class we may take tamerlane here the idea of fairies stealing children is thoroughly popular they also steal young men as lovers and again men may win fairy brides by clinging to them through all transformations a classical example is the seizure of thetis by Pelus, and the child quotes a modern cretian example the dipping in milk and water i may add has precedent in ancient egypt in the two brothers and in modern senegambia the fairy tax tithe or tenant paid to hell is illustrated by old trials for witchcraft in scotland now in literary forms and romance as in ogre de danois persons are carried away by the fairy king or queen but here the literary romance borrows from popular superstition the ballad has no need to borrow a familiar fact from literary romance on the whole subject the curious may consult the secret commonwealth of elves fauns and fairies by the reverend robert kirk of aberfoyle himself 
according to tradition a victim of the fairies thus in tamlane the whole donnay is popular but the current version that of scott is contaminated as scott knew by incongruous modernisms burns version from tradition already localizes the events at charterha the junction of ettrick and yarrow but burns version does not make the earl of murray father of the hero nor the earl of march father of the heroine roxborough is the hero's father in burns variant which is more plausible and the modern verses do not occur this ballad apparently owes nothing to literary romance in mary hamilton we have a notable instance of the historical ballad no marie of mary stuart's suffered death for child murder she had no marie hamilton no marie carmichael among her four maries though a lady of the latter name was at her court but early in the reign a french woman of the queen was hanged with her paramour an apothecary for slaying her infant knox mentions the fact which is also recorded in letters from the english ambassador uncited by mr child knox adds that there were ballads against the maries now in march seventeen nineteen a mary hamilton of scots descent a maid of honour of catherine of russia was hanged for child murder child v i three eight three it has therefore been supposed first by charles kirkpatrick sharp long ago later by professor child and then by mr carthope that our ballad is of seventeen nineteen or later and deals with the russian not the scotch tragedy to this we may reply one that we have no example of such a throwing back of a contemporary event in ballads two there is a version child v i i 507 in which mary hamilton's parmoir is a pottinger or apothecary as in the real old scottish affair three the number of variants of a ballad is likely to be proportionate to its antiquity and wide distribution now only sir patrick spens has so many wildly different variants as mary hamilton these could hardly have been evolved between seventeen nineteen and seventeen ninety when burns quotes the poem as an old ballad for we have no example of a poem so much in the old ballad manner for perhaps a hundred and fifty years before seventeen nineteen the style first degraded and then expired compare rob roy and killy cranky in this collection also the ballads of loudon hill the ballad of philippa and others much earlier than seventeen nineteen new styles of popular poetry on contemporary events as sheriff muir and tranient bray have arisen five the extreme historic inaccuracy of mary hamilton is paralleled by that of all the ballads on real events the mention of the pottinger is a trace of real history which has no parallel in the russian affair and there is no room says professor child for the supposition that it was voluntarily inserted by receiver or copyist to tally with the narrative in knox's history on the other side we have the name of mary hamilton occurring in a tragic event of seventeen nineteen but then the name does not uniformly appear in the variants of the ballad the lady is there spoken of generally as mary hamilton but also as mary mile lady masery as daughter of the duke of york stuart as mary mild 
and so forth though she bids sailors carry the tale of her doom she is not abroad but in edinburgh town nothing can be less probable than a scots popular ballad maker in seventeen nineteen telling the tale of a yesterday's tragedy in russia should throw the time back by a hundred and fifty years should change the scene to scotland the heart of the sorrow would be mary's exile and above all should compose a ballad in a style long obsolete this is not the method of the popular poet and such imitations of the old ballad as hardy Nutt show that literary poets of seventeen nineteen had not knowledge or skill enough to mimic the antique manner with any success we may therefore even in face of professor child regard mary hamilton as an old example of popular perversion of history in ballad not as one of the very latest and also one of the very best of scottish popular ballads rob roy shows the same power of perversion it was not rob roy but his sons robin oig who shot mclaren at the plough tail and james moore alternatively the spy the jacobite and the hanoverian spy once more who carried off the heiress edinbelly indeed a kind of added epilogue in a different measure proves that a poet was aware of the facts and wished to correct his predecessor such then are ballads in relation to legend and history they are on the whole with exceptions absolutely popular in origin composed by men of the people for the people and then diffused among and altered by popular reciters in england they soon won their way into printed stall copies and were grievously handled and moralized by the hack editors no ballad has a stranger history than the loving ballad of lord bateman illustrated by the pencils of cruikshank and thackeray their form is a ludicrous cockney perversion but it retains the essence bateman a captive of this turk is beloved by the turk's daughter a staple incident of old french romance and by her released the lady after seven years rejoins lord bateman he has just married a local bride but orders another marriage and sends home his bride in a coach and three this incident is stereotyped in the ballads and occurs in an example in the romantic now lord bateman is young belky in the scottish ballads who becomes young beechen young beechem and so forth and has adventures identical with those of lord bateman though the proud porter in the scots version is scarcely so prominent and illustrious as motherwell saw becky becken buchan bateman is really becket gilbert becket father of thomas of canterbury every one has heard how his saccharine bride sought him in london robert of gloucester's life and martyrdom of thomas becket pierce society see child's introduction for i eighteen sixty one and motherwell's ministry page fifteen eighteen twenty seven the legend of the dissolved marriage is from the common stock of ballad lore motherwell found an example in the state of cante fable alternate prose and verse like alcison and nicolette thus the cockney rhyme descends from the twelfth century such are a few of the curiosities of a ballad the examples selected are chiefly chosen for the romantic charm and for the spirit of the border raids which they record 
a few notes are added in an appendix the text is chosen from among the many variants in child's learned but still unfinished collection and an effort has been made to choose the copies which contain most poetry with most signs of uncontaminated originality in a few cases sir walter scott's versions though confessedly made up are preferred perhaps the editor may be allowed to say that he does not merely plough with professor child's heifer but has made a study of ballads from his boyhood this fact may exempt him even in the eyes of two patriotic american critics from the common blame of plagiarity indeed as professor child has not yet published his general theory of the ballad the editor does not know whether he agrees with the ideas here set forth so far the editor has written when news came of professor child's regretted death he had lived to finish it is said the vast collection of all known traditional scottish and english ballads with all accessible variants a work of great labor and research and a distinguished honor to american scholarship we are not told however that he had written a general study of the topic which his conclusions as to the evolution and diffusion of the ballads as to the influences which directed the selection of certain themes of martian for poetic treatment and the processes by which identical ballads were distributed throughout europe no one it is to be feared is left in europe at least whose knowledge of the subject is so wide and scientific as that of professor child it is to be hoped that some pupil of his may complete the task in his sense if indeed he has left it unfinished end of introduction recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c sir patrick spens edited by andrew lang read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the king sits in dumfermline town drinking the blue red wine o oh, o oh, where will i get a skeely skipper to sail this new ship of mine o oh? o oh, up and spake an elder knight sat at the king's right knee sir patrick spens is the best sailor that ever sailed the sea our king has written a braid letter and sealed it with his hand and sent it to sir patrick spens was walking on the strand to norway to norway to norway o'er the femme the king's daughter of norway tis thou moun bring her home the first word that sir patrick read say aloud loud laughed he the next word that sir patrick read the tear blinded his e o oh, what is this hast done this deed and told the king o oh, me to send us out at this time of the year to sail upon the sea be it wind be it wet be it hull, be it sleet, our ship must sail the femme, the king's daughter of Norway, tis we must fetch her home. They hoisied their sails on Monday morn, with at the speed they may, they had landed in Norway upon a Wednesday. They hadn't been a week, a week, in Norway but tway, when that the lords o norway began aloud to say ye scottish men spend a our king's gourd and a our queen's fee ye lie ye lie ye liars loud for loud i hear ye lie for i brought as much white money as gain my men and me 
and i brought a half fowl o good bread gourd o o'er the sea with me make ready make ready make my merry men na our guide ship sails the morn now ever alack my master dear i fear a deadly storm i saw the new moon late yestreen with the old moon in her arm and if we gang to see master i fear we'll come to harm they hadn't sailed a league a league a league but barely three when the lift grew dark and the wind blew loud and girly grew the sea the anchors brack and the top mast lap it was sick a deadly storm and the waves came over the broken ship till her sides were torn oh where will i get a good sailor to take my helm in hand till i get up to the tall top mast to see if i can spy land oh here am i a sailor guide to take the helm in hand till you go up to the tall top mast but i fear you'll never spy land he hadn't again a step a step a step but barely an when a bout flew out of our goodly ship and the salt sea it came in gay fetch o oh, web the silken cleth another o oh, the twine and wrap them into our ship's side and let na the sea come in they fetched a web o oh, the silken cloth another o oh, the twine and they wrapped them round that guide ship side but still the sea came in o oh, laith laith were our good scots lords to we their cork heel shoon but lang o'er the play was played they wat their hands a boon and money was the feather bed that fluttered on the fam and money was the good lord's son that never mare came home the ladies rang their fingers white the maidens tore their hair ah for the sakes of their true loves for them they'll see na mare o oh, lang lang may the ladies sit with their fans into their hand before they see sir patrick spens come sailing to the strand and lang lang may the maiden sit with their good claims in their hair and waiting for their ain dear loves for them they see na mare o oh, forty miles off aberdeen tis fifty fathoms deep and there lies girds sir patrick spends with the scot lords at his feet End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Battle of Otterborne, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. It fell about the Lammas tide when the Muir men win their hay the dowie douglas bound him to ride into england to drive a prey he chose the gordons and the grahams with them the lindsays light and gay but the jardins walled nor with him ride and they rue it to this day and he has burned the dales of tyne and part of banborough shire and three good towers on Reedswire fells he left them all on fire and he marched up to newcastle and rode it round about oh what's the lord of this castle or what the lady ought but up spake proud lord percy then and oh but he spake high i am the lord of this castle my wife's the lady gay 
if thou art the lord of this castle say weel it pleases me for ere i cross the border fells the tain of us shall die he took a lang spear in his hand shod with the metal free and for to meet the douglas there he rode right furiously but oh how pale his lady looked frae off the castle wa when down before the scottish spear she saw proud percy fa had we twa been upon the green and never an eye to see i wad had you flesh and fell but your sword sell gay with me but gay ye up to otterborne and wait their days is thee and if i come not ere three days is end and fa's knight cat me the otterborne's a bonny burn tis pleasant there to be but there is naught at otterborne to feed my men and me the deer rins wild on hill and dale the birds fly wild from tree to tree but there is neither bread nor kale to feed my men and me yet i will stay it otterborne where you shall welcome be and if ye come not at three days end a fa's lord it cow thee thither will i come proud percy said by the might of our lady e there will i bid thee said the douglas my troth i plight to thee they lighted high on otterborne upon the bent say brown they lighted high on otterborne and threw their pallions down and he that had a bonny boy sent out his horse to grass and he that had not a bonny boy his ain't servant he was but up then spake a little page before the peep of dawn awaken ye waken ye my good lord for percy's hard at hand ye lie ye lie ye liar loud say loud i hear ye lie for percy had no men yestreen to delight my men and me but i have dreamt a dreary dream beyond the isle of sky i saw a dead man win a fight and i think that man was i he belted on his gidbraid sword and to the field he ran but he forgot the helmet good that should have kept his brain when percy we the douglas met i wot he was fu fain they swock their swords till sair they swat and the blood ran down like rain but percy with his good broad sword that could so sharply wound his wounded douglas on the brow till he fell to the ground then he called on his little foot page and said run speedily and fetch my ain dear sister's son sir hugh montgomery my nephew's good the douglas said what wrecks the death of ain last night i dreamed a dreary dream and i ken the days thy ain my wound is deep i fain would sleep take thou the vagard of the three and hide me by the bracken bush that grows on yonder lily lee o oh, bury me by the bracken bush beneath the bloomin briar let never living mortal ken that e'er a kindly scot lies here he lifted up the noble lord with the sot tear in his eye he hid him in the bracken bush that his merry men might not see the moon was clear the day drew near the spears in flinders flew but mony a gallant englishman ere day the scotsman slew the gordons good in english blood they steeped their hose and shone the lindsays flew like fire about 
Till all the fray was done. The Percy and Montgomery met, That either of other was fain. They swapped swords, and they twa swat, And a the blood ran down between. Yield thee, now yield thee, Percy, he said, Or else I vow I lay thee low. To whom must I yield? quoth Earl Percy. Now that I see it must be so. Thou shalt not yield to lord nor lorn, nor yield shalt thou yield to me, but yield thee to the bracken bush that grows upon your lily's lee. I will not yield to a bracken bush, nor yet will I yield to a briar, but I will yield to the Earl Douglas or Sir Hugh the Montgomery, if he were here. As soon as he knew it was Montgomery, he struck his sword's point in the ground. The Montgomery was as courteous knight, and quickly took him by the hond. This deed was done at Otterburn, about the breaking of the day. Earl Douglas was buried at the bracken bush, and the Percy led captive away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tamlin, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org by Tony Addison. Tamlin, child. Part two, page three four o, Burns's version. Oh, I forbid you, maidens are, ah, that wear gold on your hair, to come a gay becata ha, for young Tamlin is there. There's name that gaze be cat or ha, but they leave him a wad. Either their rings, or green mantles, or else their maidenhead. Janet has kilted her green cuttle, a little aboon her knee, and she has braided her yellow hair, a little aboon her bree. And she's a wire to cat a haw as fast as she can hie. When she came to cat a haw, Tamlin was at the well, and there she found his steed standing, but away was himself. She had not pulled a double rose. A rose, but only twa, till up then started young Tamlin, says, Lady, thou's pull the mare. Why pulls thou the rose, Janet, and why brucks thou the wand? Or why comes thou to cat a ha, we have my command? Cat a ha, it is my ain. My daddy gave it me. I'll come and gang by cat a ha, and ask nay leave of thee. Janet has kilted her green cuttle, her little aboon her knee, and she has snooded her yellow hair, her little aboon her brie, and she is to her father's ha, as fast as she can hie. Four and twenty ladies fair were playing at the bar, and out then come the fair Janet. Once the flower among them are. Four and twenty ladies fair were playing at the chess, and out then come the fair Janet, as green as any grass. Out then spake 
an old grey knight lay o'er the castle war and says alas fair janet for thee ah but we'll be blamed are hold your tongue ye old faced neat some ill death may ye die father my baron on whom i will i'll father nain on thee out then spack up father dear and he spack meek and mild and ever alas sweet janet he says i think thou gaze with child if that a gay with child father myself mun bear the blame there's ne'er a laird about your hall shall get the baron's name if my love were an earthly knight as he's an elfin grey i would na gie my ain true love for nay lord that you hate the steed that my true love rides on is lighter than the wind whistler he is shot before with burning gold behind janet hath kilted a green kettle a little aboon her knee and she has snooded her yellow hair a little aboon her brie and she's a wa to cut a ha as fast as she can hie when she came to cut a ha tamlin was at the well and there she found his steed standing but away was himself she had na pulled a double rose a rose but only twa till up then started young tamlin says lady thou's pull ne mer why pulls thou the rose janet among the groves say green and ought to kill the bonny babe that we got us between oh tell me tell me tamlin she says for his sake that died on tree if e'er you was in holy chapel her christendom did see roxborough he was my grandfather took me with him to bide and once it fell upon a day that way did me betide and once it fell upon a day a cold day and a snell when we were for the hunting come that frae my horse a fell the queen of fairies she caught me in yon green hill to dwell and pleasant is the fairy land but an eerie tale to tell i at the end of seven years we pay a team to hell i am so fair and full of flesh i'm feared it be myself but the night is halloween lady the morn is hallow day and win me win me an ye will for well i what ye may just at the mirror and midnight hour the fairy folk will ride and they that would their true love win at miles cross they mun bide but how shall i thee can tamlin or oh, how much true love know among so many unco nights the like i never saw oh first let pass the black lady anson let pass the brown but quickly run to the milk-white steed pull ye his rider down for i'll ride 
on the milk-white steed, and I nearest the town, because I was an earthly knight, they give me that renown. My right hand shall be clubbed, lady, my left hand will be bare, cocked up a shall my bonnet be, and camed down shall my hair and there's the tokens I give thee, nae doubt, I will be there. They'll turn me in your arms, lady, into an S and add it, but hold me fast and fear me not, I am your baron's father. They'll turn me to a bear so grim, and then a lion bold, but hold me fast and fear me not, as ye shall love your child. Again they'll turn me in your arms to a red hot god of iron, but hold me fast and fear me not, I'll do to you no harm. And last they'll turn me in your arms into the burning gleed. Then Throw me into well water, or throw me in with speed, and then I'll be your ain true love. I'll turn a naked knight, then cover me with your green mantle, and cover me out of sight. Gloomy, gloomy was the night, and eerie was the way, as fair Jenny in a green mantle. A miles cross as she did gay about the middle of the night she heard the bridles ring oh, this lady was as glad as that as any earthly thing first she let the black pass by and since she let the broom but quickly she ran to the milk white steed and pulled the rider down so well she minded what he did say and young Tom did win, sun covered him we a green mantle, as blithes a bird in spring. Out then spake the queen of fairies, out of a bush of broom. Them that has gotten young Tom Lynn has gotten a stately groom. Out then. Spoke the queen of fairies, and an angry woman was she. Shame betide her ill fared face, and an ill death may she die. For she's ta'en away the bonniest knight in all my company. But had I kenned, Tam Lynn, she says, what now this night I see. I would attain out thy twa grey iron, and put in twa iron or tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thomas the Rhymer, edited by Andrew Lang, read. For LibriVox.org by Tony Addison. Thomas the Rhymer. Child. Part two. Page three one seven. True Thomas lay on Huntley Bank. A fairly he spied with his eek, and there he saw a lady bright come riding down by the Elden Tree. Her skirt was o' the grass green silk, her mantle o' the velvet fine, at ilka tet of her horse's mane hung fifty syllabels and nine. True Thomas, he pulled up his cap and looted low down to his knee. All hail, thou mighty queen of heaven, for thy peer on earth I never did see. Oh, no, oh, no, Thomas, she said, 
that name does not belong to me i am but the queen of fair elfland that am hither come to visit thee harp and cup thomas she said harp and cup along wi me and if ye dare to kiss my lips sure of your body i will be betide me weel betide me woe that weird shall never daunt me sing he has kissed her rosy lips all underneath the elden tree now ye man go wi me she said true thomas ye man go wi me and ye mun serve me seven years through weal or woe as may chance to be she mounted on her milk-white steed she tain true thomas up behind and i when e'er her bride rung the steed flew swifter than the wind oh they rade on and farther on the steed gaed swifter than the wind until they reached a desert wide and living land was left behind light down light down now true thomas and lean your head upon my knee abide and rest a little space and i will show you fairly's three oh see ye not yon narrow road so thick beset with thorns and briars that is the path of righteousness though after it but few inquires and see ye not that broad broad road that lies across that lily leaven that is the path of wickedness though some call it the road to heaven and see not ye that bonny road that winds about the ferny brake that is the road to fair elfland where thou and i this night man gay but thomas ye mun hold your tongue whatever ye may hear or see for if ye speak word in elfin land ye'll ne'er get back to your ain country oh they rade on and farther on and they waded through rivers aboon the knee and they saw neither sun nor moon but they heard the roaring of the sea it was murk murk night and there was nae star and light and they waded through red blood to the knee for all the blood that shed on earth runs through the springs of that country soon they came on to a garden green and she pulled an apple for a tree take this for thy wages true thomas it will give thee the tongue that can never lie my tongue is man ain true thomas said a goodly gift you would give me i neither doubt to buy nor sell that fair or trust where i may be i doubt neither speak to prince or peer nor ask of grace from fair lady now hold thy peace the lady said for as i say so must it be he has gotten a coat of the even cloth and a pair of shoes of velvet green until seven years were gone and passed true thomas on earth was never seen end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sir Hugh, or the Jew's Daughter Edited by Andrew Lang Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Four and twenty bonny boys Were playing at the ba, And by it came him sweet Sir Hugh, And he played o'er them a. Ah. He kicked the ba with his right foot, and catched it with his knee and throat and throw the jew's window he guard the bonny ba flee 
He's don him to the Jew's castell, And walked it round about, And there he saw the Jew's daughter, At the window looking out. Throw down the ba, ye Jew's daughter, Throw down the ba to me, Never a bit, said the Jew's daughter, Till up to me come ye. How will I come up? How can I come up? How can I come to thee? For as ye did to my odd father, The same ye'll do to me. She's gain to her father's garden, And put an apple red and green. Twas a to will him sweet Sir Hugh, And to entice him in. She's led him in through a dark door, and say has she thrown nine. She's laid him on a dressing table, and stick it him like a swine. And first came out the thick, thick blood, and sign came out the thin, and sign came out the bonny's heart blood. There was nay ne'er within. She's rowed him in a cake o' lead, bade him lie still and sleep. She thrown him in our lady's draw well, was fifty fathom deep. When bells were rung and mass was sung, and a uh, the barns came home, when every lady gat home her son, the lady misery got nane. She's then her mantle her about, her coffer by the hand, and she's gain out to seek her son, and wandered o'er the land. She done her to the Jew's castell, where a ah, were fast asleep. Gin ye be there, my sweet Sir Hugh, I pray you to me speak. Ga home, ga home, my mither dear. Prepare my winding sheet, and at the back, O oh Mary Lincoln, the morn I will you meet. Now Lady Maisry is gain helm, made him a winding sheet, and at the back, O oh Mary Lincoln, the dead corpse did her meet, and at the bells, O oh Mary Lincoln, without men's hands were rung. And ah, the books, O oh Mary Lincoln, were read without a man's tongue, and near was such a burial since Adam's days begun. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Son Davy, Son Davy. Edited by Andrew Lane. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. What bluids that on thy coat lap? Son Davy, son Davy, what bluids that on thy coat lap? And the truth come tell me, oh, is the bluid of my great hawk, mother lady, mother lady, is the bluid of my great hawk? And the truth I had told to thee, O oh, Hawk's bluid was ne'er said red. Son Davy, son Davy, Hawk's bluid was ne'er said red. And the truth come tell to me, O oh, It is the bluid of my grey hound, Mother Lady, Mother Lady. It is the bluid of my grey hound, And it woulda rin for me, O oh, Hound's bluid was ne'er said red, son Davy, son Davy. Hound's bluid was ne'er said red, and the truth come tell to me, oh. It is the bluid, oh, my brother John, mother lady, mother lady. It is the bluid, oh, my mother John, and the truth I had told to thee, oh. What about did the plea began? Son Davy, son Davy, it began about the cutting o oh, a willow wand that would never have been a tree. Oh, what death dost thou desire to die, 
Son Davy, Son Davy, what death dost thou desire to die? And the truth come tell to me, O. Oh. I set my foot in a bottomless ship, Mother Lady, Mother Lady. I set my foot in a bottomless ship, and ye'll never see mair o me, O. Oh. What wilt thou leave to thy poor wife, Son Davy? son davy grief and sorrow all her life and she'll never get mare frae me oh what wilt thou leave to thy young son son davy son davy the weary world to wander up and down and he'll never get mare o oh me oh what wilt thou leave to thy mother dear son davy son davy a fire o coals to burn her we hearty cheer and she'll ne'er get mare o me o oh. end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wife of usher's well edited by andrew lang read for LibriVox.org by Tony Addison. The Wife of Usher's Well, Child, Volume 3. There lived the wife at Usher's Well, and a wealthy wife was she. She had three stout and stalwart sons, and sent them o'er the sea. They had na been a week from her, a week but barely ain when word came to the callin wife that her three sons were gain there had na been a week from her a week but barely three when word came to the callin wife that her sons she'd never see i wish the wind may never cease nor fashes in the flood till my three sons come hame to me in earthly flesh and blood it fell about the mutton mass when nights are lang and murk the carlin wife's three sons came home and their hats were other birk it neither grew in sike nor ditch nor yet in any show but at the gates of paradise that birk grew fair anew blow up the fire my maidens bring water from the well for all my house shall feast this night, since my three sons are well. And she has made to them a bed. She's made it large and wide. And she's ta'en her mantle her about, sat down at the bedside. Up then crew the red, red cock, and up and crew the grey. The eldest to the youngest said, "'Tis time we were away. The cock he had not crowed but once, and clapped his wings at arc, when the youngest to the eldest said, "'Brother, we must away. The cock doth crack, the day doth dark, the channer and worm doth chide. Can we be mister to our place? A sour pain we man bide. Fare ye well, my mother dear, farewell to baron and byre, and fare ye weel, the bonny lass that kindles my mother's fire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Twa Cobbies, edited by Andrew Lang. Read for LibriVox.org by Tony Addison. The Twa Cobbers, Child, Volume One. As I was walking all alone, I heard Twa Cobbers making a main. The tain unto the tother said, "Where shall we gang and dine the day?" In behen yon old fail dyke, I what? There lies a new slain knight, and nobody kens that he lies there, 
but his hawk, his hound, and his lady fair. His hound is to the hunting game, his hawk to fetch the wild fowl him, his lady's taid another mate, so we may make our dinner sweet. Ye'll sit on his white horse spain, and I'll pick out his bunny blue in. We a lock o his golden hair, we'll thick our nest when it grows bare. More a one for him makes men, but nane shall ken where he is gain, or his white banes when they are bare. The wind shall blow for ever mere. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bonnie Earl Murray, edited by Andrew Lang, and read for LibriVox.org by Ashley. The Bonnie Earl Murray. Ye highlands and ye lawlands, oh, where have ye been? They have slain the Bonnie Earl of Murray, and they laid him on the green. Now wa be to thee, Huntley, and wherefore did ye say? I bade you bring him with you, but forbade you him to slay. He was a bra gallant, and he rid at the ring, and the bonny Earl of Murray, oh, he might have been a king. He was a bra gallant, and he played at the bar, and the bonny Earl of Murray was the flower among them all. He was a bra gallant, and he played at the glove, and the bonny Earl of Murray Oh, he was the queen's love. O oh, long will his lady look o'er the castle down, Ere she see the Earl of Murray come sounding through the town. Ere she see the Earl of Murray come sounding through the town. Open the gates and let him come in, He is my brother Huntley, he'll do him no harm. The gates they were opened, they let him come in, but false traitor Huntley, he did him great harm. He's been and been and been to his bed, and with a sharp rapier he stabbed him dead. The lady came down the stair, wringing her hands. He has slain the Earl o' Murray, the flower o' Scotland. But Huntley lap on his horse, rade to the king. You're welcome, Ham Huntley, and where ha ye been? Where ha ye been, and how ha ye sped? I've killed the Earl of Murray, dead in his bed. Foul fa ye, Huntley, and why did ye so? Ye might have ta'en the Earl of Murray, and saved his life too. Her bread it's to bake, her yill is to brew, My sister's a widow, and sir do I rule. Her corn grows ripe, her meadows grow green, But a bunny didn't bristle, I dare not be seen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Clerk Saunders, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver. B. C. Clerk Saunders and May Margaret walked o'er yon garden green, and sad and heavy was the love that fell there twa between. A bed, a bed, Clerk Saunders said, a bed for you and me. Fana, fana, said May Margaret, till ands we married be. For in may come my seven bod brothers with tortures burning bright. They'll say we have but a sister, and behold, she's wit a knight. Then take the sword frame my scabbard, and slowly lift the pin, and you may swear and save your eighth. You never let Clark Saunders in, and take a napkin in your hand. And tie up baith your bodies e'en, and you may swear and save your eighth. 
ye saw me na since late yestreen it was about the midnight hour when they asleep were laid when in and came her seven brothers with torches burning red when in and came her seven brothers with torches burning bright they said we have but a sister and behold her lying with a knight then out and spake the first o them i bear the sword shall gar him die and out and spake the second of them his father has nae mair than he and out and spake the third of them i wot that they are lovers dear and out and spake the fourth of them they have been in love this money a year then out and spake the fifth of them it were great sin true love to twain and out and spake the sixth of them it were shame to slay a sleeping man then up and gat the seventh of them and never a word spake he but he has stripped his bright brown band out through clerk saunders fair body clerk saunders he started and margaret she turned into his arms as asleep she lay and sad and silent was the night that was atween their tway and they lay still and sleep sound until the day began to draw and kindly to him she did say it is time true love you were awa but he lay still and slept sound albeit the sun began to sheen she looked atween her and the wa and dull and drowsy were his een then in and came her father dear said let a uh, your morning be i'll carry the dead corpse to the clay and i'll come back and comfort thee comfort will your seven sons for comforted will i never be i ween twas neither knave nor loon was in the bower last night with me the clinking bell gad through the town to carry the dead corse to the clay and clerk saunders stood at may margaret's window i wot an hour before the day are ye sleeping margaret he says or are ye waking presently give me my faith and troth again i wot true love i gid to thee your faith and troth ye sall never get nor our true love sall never twin until ye come within my bower and kiss me cheek and chin my mouth is full cold margaret and has the smell now of the ground and if i kiss thy comely mouth thy days of life will not be long o cocks are crowing a merry midnight i wot the wild fowls are boding day give me my faith and troth again and let me fare me on my way thy faith and troth thou sall not get and our true love sall never twin until ye tell what comes of woman i wot who die in strong travelling their beds are made in the heavens high down at the foot of our good lord's knee well set about we gilly flowers i wot sweet company for to see o cocks are crowing a merry midnight i wot the wild fowl are boding day the psalms of heaven will soon be sung and i ere now will be missed away then she has taken a crystal wand and she has stroken her troth thereon she has given it him out at the shot window with money a sad sigh and heaven groan i thank ye margaret i thank ye margaret and a i thank ye heartily gin ever the dead come for the quick be sure margaret i'll come for thee 
It's hosen and shoon and gown alone. She climbed the wall and followed him until she came to the green forest, and there she lost the sight o' him. Is there only room at your head, Saunders? Is there only room at your feet? Is there only room at your side, Saunders, where fain, fain I would sleep? There's nay room at my head, Margaret. There's nay room at my feet. My bed is full lowy now. Among the hungry worms I sleep. Could mould is my covering now, but and my winding sheet. The dew it falls nay sooner down than my resting place is wheat. But plait a wand o' bonny burk and lay it on my breast and shed a tear upon my grave and wish my soul's god rest and fair margaret and rare margaret and margaret o verity gin er ye love another man near love him as ye did me then up and crew the milk-white cock and up and crew the grey her lover vanished in the air, and she gayed, weeping away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wally, Wally, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, Wally wally up the bank o oh, wally wally down the brae and wally wally yon burn side where i and my love won't too gay i leaned my back unto an ache and thought it was a trusty tree but first it bowed and sin it break say my true love did lightly me o oh, wally wally but love is bonny a little time while it is new but when it's old it waxes cold and fades away like morning dew oh wherefore should i busk my head oh wherefore should i tame my hair for my true love has me forsook and says he'll never loves me mare now arthur's seat shall be my bed the sheet shall ne'er be pressed by me st anton's well shall be my drink since my true love has forsaken me martin mass wind when wilt thou blow and shake the green leaves off the tree o gentle death when wilt thou come for of my life i am weary tis not the frost that freezes fell nor blowing snaws in clemency tis not sick cold that makes me cry but my love's heart grown cold to me when we came in by glasgow town we were a comely sight to see my love was clad in the black velvet and i myself in cramacy but had i wist before i kissed that love had been say ill to win i locked my heart in a case of gold and pinned it with a silver pin oh oh if my young babe were born and set upon the nurse's knee and i myself were dead and gone and the green grass growing over me end of poem this recording is in the public domain love gregor or the lass of loch ryan edited by andrew lang read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o oh, wa will shoe my foo fair foot and wa will glove my hand and wa will lace my middle jimp with the new-made london 
band and wa wo came my yellow hair with the new made silver came and wa will father my young son till love gregor come hame your father will shoe your fu fair foot your mother will glove your hand your sister will lace your middle jimp with the new made london band your brother will came your yellow hair with the new made silver came and the king of heaven will father your bairn till love gregor came hame but i will get a bonny boat and i will sail the sea for i maun gang to love gregor since he can no come hame to me oh she has gotten a bonny boat and sailed the salt sea fame she land to see her in true love since he could not come hame oh row your boat my mariners and bring me to the land for yonder i see my love's castle close by the salt sea strand she has taken her young son in her arms and to the door she's gone and lang she knocked and sair she called but answer she got none open the door love gregor she says oh open and let me in for the wind blows through my yellow hair and the rain drips over my chin ah ah ye ill woman your nay come here for good you're but some witch or will warlock or mermaid of the flood i'm neither a witch nor a will warlock nor mermaid of the sea i am fair annie of raw royal oh open the door to me gin ye be annie of raw royal and i trust ye are not she now tell me some of the love tokens that passed between you and me oh dinna you mind now love gregor when we sat at the wine how we changed the rings frae our fingers and i can show thee thine oh yours was good and good enough but a the best was mine for yours was o oh, the good red gold but mine oh the diamonds find but open the door now love gregor oh open the door i pray for your young son that is in my arms will be dead ere it be day ah ah ye ill woman for here ye shannon win in gae drown ye in this raging sea or hang on the gallows pin when the cock had crown and day did dawn and the sun began to peep then up he rose him love gregor and sair sair did he weep oh i dreamed a dream my mother dear the thoughts oh it gares me greet that fair annie of Ra royal lay cold dead at my feet gin it be for annie of Ra royal that ye make a uh, this din she stood a uh, last night at this door but i trow she want no in away betide ye ill woman and ill dead may ye die that ye would not open the door to her nor yet would waken me oh he has gone down to yon shore side as fast as he could fare and saw fair annie in her boat but the wind it tossed her sair and hey annie and how annie oh annie winna ye bids but a the mare that he cried annie the braider grew the tide and hey annie and how annie dear annie speak to me but a the louder he cried annie the louder roared the sea the wind blew loud the sea grew rough 
and dashed the boat on shore fair annie floats on the raging sea but her young son rose no more love gregor tear his yellow hair and made a heavy moan fair annie's corpse lay at his feet but his bonny young son was gone o oh, cherry cherry was her cheek and golden was her hair but clay cold were her rosy lips nay spark of life was there and first he kissed her cherry cheek and next he kissed her chin and safely pressed her rosy lips but there was nay breath within o oh, wid betide my cruel mother and an ill dead may she die for she turned my true love from my door when she came say far to me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the queen's marie edited by andrew lang and read for LibriVox.org by Ashling. The Queen's Marie Marie Hamilton's to the kirk gone were ribbons in her hair. The king thought mar a Marie Hamilton than ony that were there. Marie Hamilton's to the kirk gone were ribbons on her breast. The king thought mar a Marie Hamilton than he listened to the priest. Marie Hamilton's to the kirk gone, with gloves upon her hands. The king thought mar a Marie Hamilton than the queen and ah her lands. She had not been about the king's court a month but barely one, till she was beloved by all the king's court, and the king the only man. She had not been about the king's court a month but barely three, Till fra the king's court, Marie Hamilton, Marie Hamilton durst na be. The king is to the abbey gone, to poo the abbey tree, to scale the babe from Marie's heart, but the thing it would not be. O oh, she has rode it in her apron, and set it on the sea. Gay sink ye or swim ye, bonny babe, ye's get no mar o oh, me. Word is to the kitchen gone, and word is to the ha, and word is to the noble room among the ladies ah, that Marie Hamilton's brought to bed, and the bonny babes missed in a wa. Scarcely had she lain down again, and scarcely fallen asleep, when up then started our good queen, just at her bed feet, saying, Marie Hamilton, where's your babe? For I am sure I heard it greet. Oh no, oh no, my noble queen, think no such thing to be. Twas but a stitch into my side, and sir, it troubles me. Get up, get up, Marie Hamilton, get up and follow me, for I am going to Edinburgh town, a rich wedding for to see. Oh, slowly, slowly raised she up, and slowly put she on, and slowly rode she out the way where many a weary groan. The queen was clad in scarlet, her merry maids all in green, and every town that they came to, they took Marie for the queen. Ride holy, holy, gentlemen, ride holy now with me, for never, I am sure, a wearier bird rade in your company. But little wist Marie Hamilton, when she rade on the brown, that she was gone to Edinburgh town, and ah, to be put down. Why weep ye so, ye burgess wives? Why look ye so on me? Oh, I am going to Edinburgh town, a rich wedding for to see. When she gaed up the toll booth stairs, the corks fra her heels did flee, and lang or ere she came down again, she was condemned to dee. When she came to the netherbrow port, she laughed loud laughters three, but when she came to the gallows foot, the tears blinded her e. Yes, serene the queen had four Maries, the night shall have but three. 
There was Marie Seaton and Marie Beaton, and Marie Carmichael and me. Oh, often I have dressed my queen, and put gold upon her hair, but now I've gotten for my reward the gallows to be my share. Often I have dressed my queen, and often made her bed, but now I've gotten for my reward the gallows tree to tread. I charge ye, all ye mariners, when ye sail o'er the foam, let neither my father nor mother get wet, but the dime coming home. I charge ye, all ye mariners, that sail upon the sea, let neither my father nor mother get wit, this dog's death I am to dee. For if my father and mother got wit, and my bold brethren three, O oh, mickle would be the good red blood, this day would be spilt for me. O oh, little did my mother ken, the day she cradled me, the lands I was to travel in, or the death I was to dee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kinmont Willie, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. O oh, have ye heard o oh, the false sakeld? O oh, have ye heard o oh, the keen Lord Scroop? O oh, they ha teen bod Kinmont Willie on Harrowby to hang him up. Had Willie had but twenty men, but twenty men as stout as be, Fos Sakeld had never the Kinmont tan. We eight score in his company. They banned his legs beneath the steed. They tied his hands behind his back. They guarded him five some on each side, and they brought him o'er the little rack. They led him through the little rack, and also through the Carl Sands. They brought him to the Carl Castle, to be at my Lord Scroop's commands. My hands are tied, but my tongue is free, and we will dare this deed avow, or answer by the border law, or answer to the bald Buckloo. Now haud thy tongue, thou rank revere, there's never a Scot shall set ye free, before ye cross my castle gate. I trow ye shall take farewell o me. Fear na ye that, my lord, quo Willie, by the faith o my body, Lord Scroop, he said, I never yet lodged in a hostelry, but I paid my lying before I gaed. Now word is gain to the bod keeper, in Branksome Ha, where that he lay, that Lord Scroop has taen the Kinmont Willie between the hours of night and day. He has taen the table with his hand. He guard the red wine spring on he. Now Christ is cursed on my head, he said, but avenged of Lord Scroop I'll be. Oh, is my bassinet a widow's kerch, or my lance a wand of the willow tree, or my arms a lady's lily hand, that an English lord should lightly me and have they tain him kinmont willie really, against the truce of border tide and forgotten that the bod buckloo is keeper here on the scottish side and have they e'en taken him kinmont willie really, without an either dread or fear and forgotten that the bod buckloo can back a steed or shake a spear o oh, were there war between the lands 
as well I wot that there is none I would slight Carl Castle high, though it were builded of marble stone. I would set that castle in a low, and sloken it with English blood. There's never a man in Cumberland should ken where Carl Castle stood. But since nay wars between the lands, and there is peace, and peace should be, I'll neither harm English lad or lass, and yet the Kinmont freed shall be. He has called them forty marchmen bald, I trow they were of his ain name, except Sir Gilbert Elliot called, the laird of sobs, I mean the same. He has called them forty marchmen bald, were kinsmen to the bald Buckluke, with spur on heel and splint on spald, and gloves of green and feathers blue. There were five and five before them, ah, we hunting horns and bugles bright, and five and five came we Buckluke, like warden's men arrayed for fight, and five and five like a mason gang that carried the ladders lang and he and five and five like broken men and so they reached the wood house lee and as we cross the baitable land when to the english side we held the first o men that we met we what saw it be but fos sakel where be ye gone ye hunters keen quo fos sakel come tell to me we go to hunt an english stag has trespassed on the scots country where be ye gone ye martial men quo fos sakel come tell me true we go to catch a rank revere has broken faith we the bod buckloo where are ye gun ye mason lads we are ah, your ladders laying and he we gang to harry a corby's nest that wands not far frae wood house lee where be ye gone ye broken men quo fos sakel come tell to me now dicky of dry hope led that band and the never a word o lear had he why trespass ye on the english side row footed outlaws stand quo he the near a word that dicky to say say he thrust the lance thro' his false body then on we held for carl town and at stanshaw bank the eden we crossed the water was great and meekle of spate but the never a horse nor man we lost and when we reached the stanshaw bank the wind was rising loud and he and there the laird guard leave our steeds for fear that they should stamp and neigh and when we left the stanshaw bank the wind began full loud to blow was twas wind and wheat and fire and sleet when we came beneath the castle wall we crept on knees and held our breath till we placed the ladders against the wall and say ready was Buckloo himself to mount she first before us all he has taken the watchman by the throat he flung him down upon the lead had there not been peace between our lands upon the other side thou hast god now sound out trumpets quo Buckloo let's waken lord scropey right merrily 
Then loud the warden's trumpet blew, O way dare meddle with me! Then speedily to work we god, And raised the slogan and an ah, And cut a hole through a sheet of lead, And so we won to the castle hall. They thought the king James and his men had won the house with bow and spear. It was but twenty Scots and ten that put a thousand in sic a steer. We coulters and we four hammers, we guard the bars bang merrily until we came to the inner prison where Willie O'Kinmont he did lie and when we came to the lower prison where willie o'kinmont he did lie o sleep ye wake ye kinmont willie upon the morn that thou to die o i sleep saft and i wake aft it's lang since sleeping was the fleed frae me gie me my service back to my wife and bairns and a guide fellows that spare for me then red rowan has hent him up the starkest man in tevio dale abide abide now red rowan till of my lord scrope i take farewell 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 my guide lord scrope my guide lord scrope farewell he cried i'll pray you for my lodging mail when first we meet on the border side then shoulder high with shout and cry we bore him down the ladder lang at every stride red rowan made i wot the king mont's arms played clang o money time quo king mont willie i've ridden horse baith wild and wood but a rougher beast than red rowan i ween my legs have ne'er be stroke and money a time quo kinmont willie i've pricked a horse out are the furs but since the day i backed a steed i never wore sick cumbrous spurs we scarce had won the stanshaw bank when a the carlisle bells were rung and a thousand men in horse and foot came with the keen lord scrope along buckloo has turned to eden water even where it flowed frae bank to brim and he has plunged in we as his band and safely swam them through the stream he turned him on the other side and at lord scrope his glove he flung he if ye like na me visit in merry england in fair scotland come visit me all sore astonished stood lord scrope he stood as still as rock of stain he scarcely dared to true his eyes when throw the water they had gain he is he either himself a devil frae hell or else his mother a witch mon be i wad na have riven that one water for a uh, the gold in christen dee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Jamie Telfer, edited by Andrew Lang, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. It fell about the Martinmas tide, when our border steeds get corn and hay. The captain of Brewcastle hath bound him to ride, and he's o'er to Tividale to drive a prey the first a guide that they met we it was high up 
Harden House Wire. The second guide that we met we, it was laid down in Borthwick Water. What tidings, what tidings, my trusty guide? Nay tidings, nay tidings, I hae to thee. But gin you'll gae to the fair Doddhead, money a cow's cough I'll let thee see. And when they can to the fair Doddhead, right hastily they clam the peel. They loosened the key out, an and a, and ranshackled the house right wheel. Now Jamie Telfer's heart was sare, the tear a rowing in his eye. He pled we the captain to hay his gear, or else revenged he would be. The captain turned him round and laugh, said, Man, there's nothing in thy house but a odd sword without a sheath that hardly now would fell a mouse the sun was na up but the moon was down it was the griming o oh, a new farm snaw jamie telfer has run three miles afoot between the dothead and the stobs ha and when he came to the fair tower yate he shouted loud and cried weel he till out bespake odd gibby elliot what's this that brings the fray to me it's i jamie telfer o oh, the fair dodhead and a harried man i think i be there's nothing left at the fair dodhead but a waifful wife and barney's three gae seek your succour at brank some ha for succour ye's get nane fra me gae seek your succour where ye paid blackmail for man ye never paid money to me jamie has turned him round about i want the tear blinded his eye i'll ne'er pay mail to elliot again and the fair dod head i'll never see my hounds may a ring masterless my hawks may fly frae tree to tree my lord may grip my vassal lands for there again mon i'll never be he has turned him to the tivet side and as fast as he could dree till he came to the coat tart clough and there he shouted baith loud and he then up bespack him odd jock grieve what's this that brings the fray to me it's i jamie telfer o oh, the fair dodhead a harried man i trow i be there's nothing left in the fair dodhead but a greeting wife and bairnies three and sax poor ca's stand in the sta a routing loud for their minnie alack a wee quo odd jock grieve alack my heart is sair for thee for i was married on the elder sister and you on the youngest of a th the three then he has taken out a bonny black was right we fed we corn and hay and he set jamie telfer on his back to the cat's lock hill to take the fray and when he cam to the catlock hill he shouted loud and will cried he till out and spack him william's wat o oh, what's this brings the fray to me it's i jamie telfer o oh, the fair dodhead a harried man i think i be the captain of bow castle has driven my gear 
for God's sake rise and succor me. Alas for way, quo Williams Watt, alack for thee my heart is sair. I never cam by the fair dodhead that ever I fand thy basket bear. He set his two sons on coal black steeds, himself upon a freckled grey, and they are we, Jamie Telfer, to Branksom ha to take the fray. And when they cam to Branksom ha, they shouted a baith loud and he, till up and spack him, odd brocleck, said was this brings the fray to me it's i jamie telfer o oh, the fair dodhead and a harried man i think i be there's naught left in the fair dodhead but a greeting wife and bare knees three alack for way quoth the good old lord and ever my heart is way for thee but fee gar cry on willie my son and see that he come to me speedily gar warn the water braid and wide gar warn it soon and hastily they that winna ride for telfer's key let them never look in the face o me warn what o hardin and his sons we them will borthwick water ride warn gee lands and allen ha and gimliska and common side ride by the gate at priest haw's wire and warn the curs old lee as ye come down the hermitage slack warn doughy willie o gorn be the scots they raid the scots they ran see starkly ah see steadily and a the owner ward o oh, the thrang was rise for branksom readily the gear was driven the forestly up fray the forestly unto the plain one willie has looked his men before and saw the key right fast driving what drives their key gan willie say to mark and outspeckle o me it's i the captain o bew castle willie i winna lay my name for thee o will ye let teffer's key gae back or will ye do aught for regard o me or by the faith o my body quo willie scott i see where my dame's cough skin on thee i winny let the key gae back neither for thy love nor yet thy fear but i will drive jamie telfer's key in spite of every scot that's here set them on lads quo willie then fee lads set on them cruelly for ere they win to the ridder ford mony a tomb saddle there sall be but willie was stricken o'er the head and through the kneescap the sword has gain and hardened grat for very rage when willie on the ground lay slain but he's taken off his good skeel cap and thrice he's waved it in the air the din they saw was ne'er mare white nor the liart locks of hardin's hair revenge revenge odd what gan cry fie lads lay on them cruelly will ne'er see tivot side again or willie's death revenge shall be o money a horse ran master lass the splinter lances flew on he but or they won to the curse soap ford the scots had gotten the victory john o'bringham there was slain and john o'barlow as i hear say and thirty may o oh, the captain's men 
lay bleeding on the ground that day the captain was run through the thick of the thigh and broken was his right leg bane if he had lived this hundred year he had never been loved by woman again hey back the key the captain said dear key i trow to some thy be for gin i sould live a hundred years there will ne'er fair lady smile on me then word is gained to the captain's bride even in the bower where that she lay that her lord was prisoner in enemy's land since into tiffdale he had led the way i would lord have had a winding sheet and help to put it o'er his head ere he had been disgraced by the border scot when he o'er liddell his men did lead there was a wild gallant among us a his name was watty we the wood spurs cried on for his house in stangerside if only man will ride with us when they came to the stanger side they dang we trees and burst the door they loosed out a ah, the captain's key and set them forth on lads before there was an odd wife among the fire a wee bit o oh, the captain's kin what dar lose out the captain's key or answer to him and his men it's i waddy woodspurs lose the key i win a lane my name fry thee and i will lose out the captain's key in scorn of ah uh, his men and he when they came to the fair dot head they were a welcome sight to see for instead of his ain ten milk key jamie telfer has gotten thirty and three and he has paid the rescue shot both with gold and with money and at the burial o willie scott i wot ma's money a weeping e end of poem this recording is in the public domain